So when we think about wireless technologies and kind of the key pillars of the Internet of Things, wireless is very, very important, what we're, whether we're talking about cellular, Wi-Fi, uh, private LTE, LoRaWAN, mesh technologies, and fluid mesh plays right into that. And I think what we've found and what we really advocate as our point of view from a Cisco perspective is that it's not a one-size-fits-all fit, fit all solution set for wireless. There are lots of different types of trade-offs that you have to make and getting the right technology for the right use case is really what we stress to our customers um, as we look at their wireless needs. And fluid mesh plays in the unlicensed band, but really in these very high data rate scenarios. So what they provide is tremendous amount of backhaul of video or um, telemetry or uh, data information that you need in order to uh, in order to run an auto, uh, automated vehicle or to do Wi-Fi on a high-speed train. And really at that uh, kind of five gigahertz kind of plus on the, um, on, the, uh, on the spectrum side. So fluid mesh, when you look at those kind of high data rates and how you differentiate it is really around four kind of key elements. Number one is low latency. So less than 10 milliseconds kind of enabling high-speed, real-time uh, demand for applications. And it, the fluid mesh really stresses those types of environments that require high throughput because they can do up to 700 megabits per second at 350 kilometers. So when you look at rolling stock trackside communication or AGVs that are out in a mining pit that have got both what you need in order to drive the vehicle but also backhaul video, high amount of data and high throughput kind of coming back through the fluid mesh solution set. Stability and reliability for the customer sets, they want to guarantee extreme uptime. You can't have latency, you can't have assets in which you cannot connect to those assets if you're directing them remotely. And finally, seamless handoff. So no downtime when you're roaming, so as you're moving between wireless antennas or those receivers that you still maintain the wireless coverage. So if you're providing uh, Wi-Fi capabilities for passengers on a high-speed train. Want to make sure that you have that handoff so that's really set, and that opens up a ton of different use cases for fluid mesh. Everything from secure and smart cities, from intersections and roadway infrastructure, mail, uh, rail, and mass transit, ports and maritimes with their uh, all the cranes and the, and the very large geographic areas, and that's also reflected in the mining scenarios, both below ground as well as uh, pit mining scenarios where you've got very, very large geographic locations and trucks and various, various loaders kind of moving around those areas. Airports, government military, even some uh, theme park rides, agriculture, broadcasting of live events. All of those really require the following three elements. Video security is a, is a key takeaway across all of these types of use cases. The automated guided vehicles, automated vehicle control, we're seeing more and more of that, specifically in highly hazardous uh, scenarios or scenarios such as rail where we can, um, we can do an automated train and use that uh, in a subway system. So that having that sort of, having that high connectivity, very, very important in those environments. And finally, live audio video streaming. So cameras that are, would be on board rolling stock or various types of scenarios going back to operators, very key. With passenger Wi-Fi being a uh, table stakes application in the mass transit and the rail uh, area. What's inside the, the, uh, the radios? Number one is the, is the Prodigy 2.0, the MPLS base, and they are converting MPLS into TCP IP. Um, that transmission protocol that's really the intellectual property inside the, the, the inside the fluid mesh radios between the receiver and the radio with MIMO antennas that that create that reliable and robust communication in high uh, interference environments. A fast roaming protocol known as fluidity for mobile applications. A scalable architecture in which you can add additional units, additional radios on different devices with a real and upgrade the network as you go along and deployment configuration and management that's made very easy with the management tools that I'll show you in just a second. You can completely customize the dashboard and they've done that in this scenario where we're looking at two open pit mines, pit one, pit two, um, six 
and 10 uh, units or devices in uh, those two scenarios. And you can see the number of devices online, the throughput, the packets up and down, kind of across the entire topology. And then we can begin to drill in if we see an issue detected. So in uh, pit number two, we've had a problem with uptime and we had to have one of the radios rebooted, rebooted. So we can go in and we can take a look per the radio. So you can see both the mesh ID, the IP address, the frequency and the transmission power, as well as the links to the throughput and what's exactly happening on the device. You can drill down directly to the IP address and the systems that are being supported by fluid mesh and see the performance of the radio. And you can look at that in the cohorts over time. So that uh, device up at the top, you can scale that and you can take a look at, or it's, pardon me, scale, but you can move the timestamp so you can see over time the performance of the radio architecture and the topology, and then get that uh, and maximize that and look at where you've had an issue. So this particular set of dashboard tools um, with Fluid Mesh is what is currently, we're currently selling with a solution set. And uh, we'd be happy to talk with you at, uh, at a later date about integration of some of these managerial elements into the overall IoT umbrella. Use cases. So um, a couple of different use cases, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, subways, light rail vehicles in Lyon, where it's either a thousand new cameras that were installed, kind of where they're doing backhaul of video off of the Lyon Metro. St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg Metro that is buried deep underground, seven, 750 million passengers a year, providing Wi-Fi connectivity to the passenger set throughout the entire subway. We also partnered, or Cisco partnered with Fluid Mesh for the radio receivers on this particular product, and it emulates a lot of what we've done in Moscow. The Q line light rail in Detroit. 20 stops, 500 meters between pole to pole. So again, the ability of the radio and the mesh network that Fluid Mesh brings for that connectivity at distance. So 500 meters between the poles in the urban environment, onboard Wi-Fi for our citizens in Detroit. The Virginia Department of Transportation, I think one of the best use cases here where they took out existing cabled, a cabled infrastructure solution for 350 intersections and uh, coalesced uh, 130 independent data networks onto a thousand radio type of fluid mesh platform. So they had savings out of the box on the initial rollout on just being able to use the, uh, the fluid mesh wireless technology versus fixed asset and 20,000 per month on a recurring basis and the ability of being able to backhaul more data than they had before. The video cameras, DSRC, different types of technologies that we're now seeing in traffic intersections. Two uh, port terminal solutions and examples. La Spezia, outside of Genoa in Italy, where you've got the um, terminal operating system and the connectivity that you need inside the terminal. So lots of interference, lots of different devices from the gantries, the different cranes, the stacking cranes that we have, and then moving these containers, finding the containers and being able to, to put the uh, get the gantry at the right location, move the... Uh, container onto either a truck or a rail to deport the, the, the um, location. Very, very large physical environment, a lot of interference. Fluid mesh really can provide that level of communication uh, at La Spezia and then also at Malta. So same sort of uh, elements in Malta where we've got uh, very lots of different containers as well as the cranes that are operating there. Um, they use video on top of the cranes to do uh, optical character recognition of the, of the ID of the container. And then it gets placed inside uh, the port in the yard that you can see there. And then they back all of, then they can go find that container and move all of that data that is around video analytics, the communications that you have between these assets um, in this environment and fluid mesh really collects all that up. And then finally in Fort Wingate, so a, uh, early kind of mining example here with tele remote operations where you've got excavators uh, front loader in this case with zero millisecond handoff time and less than 10 millisecond latency so you can have the kind of agv communications that you need to be able to move that device move these devices around so that's a wrap up of what we're doing with fluid mesh and what fluid mesh really brings to the iot uh, wireless portfolio we have tons of resources. You can read about the acquisition and elements online just following these links that we're showing right here. 
And we'll also provide a link in the broadcast that you can click on and then show you what we've got so you can get more information about fluid mesh and how it's making a dramatic impact to your business.